Uh, I guess, first of all, I apologise in advance, guys. I've developed a bit of a sore throat uh, over the evening, so hopefully it'll be okay. Hopefully you can understand me. Past the, the, the broad Scottish accent, I'll talk slow. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to you about protecting Microsoft Teams using uh, two parts of the Microsoft 365 stack, and that's going to be conditional access and cloud app security. My name is Rue Campbell. Uh, I'm a technical consultant for a company called Softcap PLC here in the UK. You can find me on Twitter uh, using the handle that you see on the screen just there. I'm also active on LinkedIn. If you just search for Rue Campbell, you can find me there. And then also, uh, I also run a podcast with uh, Pete, who's the moderator of this track. We call that Cloud Conversations. And you can find that on YouTube. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, when we think about the kind of things we need to protect in Microsoft Teams, the first one that comes to mind, given how much it is capable of holding, uh, is data. We have to control data loss, data loss prevention. And there's a whole bunch of ways of doing this. And specifically in this session, I'm going to talk to you about uh, preventing personal devices, downloading and then syncing. Obviously, in the background of Teams, whenever we share files, uh, those are hosted in SharePoint Online in the background. And one of the powerful tools that you can get is you can synchronize an entire SharePoint document library to your PC. Now, straight out of the box with Office 365, your users will be licensed to take that license and install it on up to five devices. And also straight out of the box, there's no limitations on where they can do that. So if you're a brand new Office 365 customer, your users can take that license and start installing it on their personal PC. Over the past, you know, 12 to 15 months, that's been extremely powerful. And so far as we've all had to start working from home, we've had these lockdown efforts and there's been problems with supply chains, getting company laptops to our users. So we've seen a huge spike in BYOD use. That's been great for keeping the economy ticking, keeping business productivity running during the pandemic and while we're all working from home. But it does, uh, it does bring a point that point of the, the data risk. It's there, it's out there on folks' PCs, their personal PCs, which depending on where you are in your, your journey to cloud management, you might not have control over. So the first thing we're going to protect is data loss as it sits within Microsoft Teams. Next thing, think more traditionally about what kind of things we have to protect. Uh, and one of those is malware, viruses, Trojans, things such as that. And one of the powerful features I'm going to show, dem show and demonstrate to you today uh, is how we can block risky malware identified files from being uploaded to those same services. So stop that upload of files going into SharePoint Online if they look like they've potentially got malware in them. Uh, this is, again, maybe more of a risk if your users are accessing on their personal devices. On a corporate device, you've maybe got a little bit more security and a bit more peace of mind that you have endpoint protection running on that device with a solution such as Microsoft Defender. You don't necessarily have that peace of mind on a user's home device. They can go and they can, although Microsoft Defender is baked into Windows 10 as part of the operating system now, they can still go in, they can turn it off, they might turn it off in favour of a weaker third party, things such as that. So we'll protect against users uploading malware into Microsoft Teams files. Uh, and then lastly, the thing we're going to talk about protecting is inappropriate communication, specifically sensitive information. So for example, we might not want our users to discuss and to transmit uh, confidential data types over the Teams platform. We might reserve that for maybe a more secure platforms such as uh, one-time pads and things like that. The example that comes to mind is transmitting things such as credit card numbers over Teams chats. Um, although Teams itself is secured and we've got encryption as the data travels and we've got uh, data at rest encryption in the data centers, those kind of credit card informations, they're still going to be available to anyone that joins that chat, that does e-discovery and things like that. So we might want to have a way that is more destructive uh, or encrypted when we're reviewing that type of information and sending it. So that's where we're going to, what we're going to protect and specifically where we're going to try and aim our protection is these unmanaged devices. Again, on a managed device, which 
in Microsoft's language, managed device means a device that you have some level of control over, either through group policy on your domain or through Intune. You have the ability to wipe that data fundamentally, so you, you've got ultimate control over it. On these unmanaged devices, which we think of the BYOD scenario, or maybe a device that you've just given to a user without having the time to set it up, that's primarily where we're going to target our protection. Again, we still want to empower the users to do all this stuff on their own devices. Uh, I think over the last 15 months, we've seen that BYOD can work uh, specifically, and it's going to need to work as we move into this hybrid work environment where folks might not necessarily always be in the office. They might not necessarily always have company equipment. What we're going to focus on today are two services that can help us achieve these goals. The first one I'm going to talk to you about is conditional access. Conditional access is part of Azure Active Directory Premium P1. You can license that on its own, or you can get it as part of some of the larger bundles, such as Microsoft 365 E3. And the way I like to describe conditional access is kind of like if this, then that, but for app authentication. So what does that mean? Conditional access looks at what I describe as the circumstances surrounding a user's authentication. So that's the, the if this part of the user signing in. Microsoft call these assignments, but this is going to be stuff such as where is the user authenticating from? And it can do that based on IP address. Uh, what type of device is the user authenticating on? So that could be the platform, the, basically the operating system. It could be the management state of that device. So is it a device that is compliant with an engine? or hybrid Azure AD joined. So we can take all these, these signals about that sign in process. And then what we can do is uh, we can then apply rules and that's the then that side of things. So that's the actions that we can apply on the back of the circumstances. Micro call these access controls, but fundamentally what they mean is if a user is signing under these circumstances that I've identified, then either let them in, don't let them in, or if I do let them in, they're going to have to jump through a few hoops or they're only going to be allowed in under a few specific scenarios that I uh, that I specify. Maybe the big one that you'll be aware of with regards to conditional access is the use of multi-factor authentication. So that's the big one. Uh, you know, Microsoft published some great data on the number of account compromises the MFA protects against and conditional access is part of that picture of building up your security posture there insofar as we can say well if you're outside the company premises then we're going to apply MFA and that's the condition and then the rules that are applied to that condition. We'll develop on that a little bit more and we will basically say within conditional access if you're accessing Teams or the Office 365 suite under certain scenarios then we're going to do a little bit more to protect Microsoft Teams. The second service that we're going to use to protect our scenario here today is a service that Microsoft offer called Microsoft Cloud App Security or MCAS. And that's described as a cloud access security bro broker or a CASB. And essentially what a CASB does is it sits between your user and the cloud services that that user accesses. So they're SaaS applications. And what it does is it brokers that jump from what the user is doing in their cloud services and we can then kind of have some control over that. We can use cloud app security to get a tremendous level of auditing and investigation capabilities insofar as we can see all the activity that that user performs on not only Microsoft Teams but also the rest of the Office 365 suite and that's going to include OneDrive and SharePoint. We can then apply automated governance based on certain actions that that user might take. So for example, if we identify a series of risky actions around files, maybe a whole bunch of files have just been uploaded and they've got a file type extension that looks like that of ransomware, we can apply automated governance and we can do things such as maybe we're going to suspend that user, we're going to kill their ability to authenticate with the service. And then the thing we're specifically going to get into a little bit more detail about in the demos coming up uh, are session controls. When cloud app security enforces session controls, what we're doing is we're creating a reverse proxy. 
and we're going to say that as the traffic travels from the user to the service, we're going to intercept it and that's going to give us control over what that user is allowed to do. You'll see in the demo the kind of powerful stuff we can do, but think of things such as if I'm able to intercept that traffic as a user tries to download a file, I can have controls over what they can and can't download. So that's that's the tech. That's what we're going to use to achieve what we want to achieve. If we look at a high level, what does that end up looking? How do we describe to our user base what they can and can't do? Again, we think about how this is particularly relevant with the rise of BYOD. And then we think of the two types of devices that a user can access Teams on. On the one hand, we've got tablets and mobiles. Really, when I say that, I'm talking about iOS and Android. And then we also have desktops and laptops, which we'll translate to saying uh, Windows and Mac OS. And we're going to have different approaches around both of these uh, different types of device. For our tablets and mobiles, uh, users are typically, oh, sorry, my webcam just dropped there. Users are typically very comfortable using the apps uh, rather than the web interfaces on the mobile phone. So for example, if I want to get email on my personal iPhone, as a user, I'm going to be more comfortable downloading Outlook from the App Store and accessing all my email that way. It's rare that I would lean towards the website of that. What we will do therefore is we will use conditional access to enforce the use of something called an app protection policy. And what an app protection policy lets me do is take some control over that app without controlling the full device. So, <clears throat> pardon me, we want to respect the user's personal property. You know, this is my phone, it's not my company's phone. If I'm going to be doing work on this phone, you don't get full rights over it. That wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be comfortable with me giving you the ability to wipe my full phone. However, where I will meet you in the middle is I'll say, you know what, I'm going to be accessing company data using using Outlook, using Word, using SharePoint apps, using the Teams app. Therefore, you can have some level of control over the app and only the app. So if our user leaves the business, we can kind of initiate a remote wipe but only at the app level. So we can protect the company data uh, without having to hijack the user's whole phone. That's called an app protection policy, also called mobile application management or MAM. And that's going to be our strategy on the tablet and mobile side of things. With regards to the desktop and the laptop, and this is where the user is really going to be at their most productive, and it's where they're going to be spending 95% of their 95, right? Again, we want to secure that BYOD access and we think about the different ways a user can get into the apps. That's going to be either the full blown client app. So I'm, you know, I'm installing the office suite and I'm accessing it that way. I'm installing Teams and I'm accessing it that way. And that's called a client app. And essentially what we're going to do as part of this demo is we're going to demonstrate the ability to make sure that users can only sign into those full client apps if they're on a managed device, which roughly translates to either a corporate device or a device that we have some level of control over. And the reason we want to limit the full applications to these devices we have control over is the ability to protect the data in those thick client apps, specifically on Windows, uh, it's really quite limited. You might hear about app protection policies for Windows. That's done using a service called Windows Information Protection. Quite frankly, it's it's not perfect and there are significant ways of getting around it uh, and leading to a lot of data loss. So that's how we'll be approaching it on the desktop. However, if we're going to be saying to folks, you are not allowed to sign into the full blown app on a personal device, then we have to let them in some way. And luckily, Office Online is very good now, uh, as is Teams on the web. You have specifically for teams you have really close feature parity with the full client apps so what we'll be doing is we'll therefore be saying well you're not allowed into the, the full application but you will be allowed into the web-based application and specifically when i think about microsoft teams on the web again the feature parity it's not one-to-one -one, but for things such as channels chat uh, a lot of the video conferencing and phone conferencing uh, it is good enough for a vyod scenario 
there's a few limitations like you don't get background blur and a few things like that on the web versions as far as i'm aware but we're going to you know we're uh, we're putting uh we're taking the balance of security versus productivity and we're trying to meet somewhere in the middle there so that's our strategy and that's how we're going to try and achieve this this overall uh, way of protecting our data protecting our communications and also protecting ourselves against malicious files making their way into teams so enough of the enough of the powerpoints let's uh, get into a demo first of all i will show you how as an administrator you can set this up and again uh, i'll talk through the licensing because that is going to be important you have to be aware of what you're licensed for so i will just jump into azure active directory and this is where we're going to set up our conditional access policies without these conditional access policies everything i mentioned with regards to cloud app security in regards to the application protection policies on mobile phones we can't really enforce that what cloud sorry what conditional access does is it looks at that sign in context and then it says okay now i'm going to enforce cloud app security session policies or now i'm going to enforce to use an app protection policy on your mobile phone so we'll look at these three uh, conditional access policies the first one let's look at the mobile phone element first of all i'll jump into this policy here and i'll show you how conditional access is built up first of all we give it a name that's that can be anything you want to choose something that i can quickly glance at and see specifically what this conditional access policy is doing we then have again you know the the if this and then the then that elements of conditional access called assignments and access controls we say the users and groups we want this conditional access policy to apply and with users and groups as well as the apps and the conditions every single one of these has to apply for the conditional access policy to be enforced to the user so for example uh, my users are obviously going to be in all users but if I click cloud apps, uh, we're only going to be enforcing this conditional access policy on Office 365. So if I have other SaaS apps that are using Azure AD for authentication, this policy is not going to apply. And then similarly, if I jump into my conditions, what I've said here is Android and iOS. And what that means is that any of these other operating systems, Windows Phone is still there, you've got to, you've got to love that, that's cute. Uh, none of those other operating systems are going to be scooped up by this conditional access policy so what we're doing here is we're saying if you're one of my all users you're accessing office 365 and you're doing it on ios and android then i am going to grant access and this is where we get into the then that side of things i'm going to grant access however i'm going to require an app protection policy where we set up these app protection policies is actually an engine and although this session is mostly going to focus on cloud app security i will briefly show you what that might look like you can see here if i jump back to intune which is part of emsc3 as far as licensing is concerned uh, then i get controls over things such as the ability to copy and paste uh, to and from different apps so for example within the outlook app on ios i might have multiple mailboxes i might have a work one and a personal one using an app protection policy we can restrict the ability to copy and paste from the work context into the personal context so that's the kind of power we've got over data loss and again that's going to apply whenever a user signs in to ios or android under any circumstances including the web so if a user tries to log into safari and ios tries to get into outlook on the web or teams uh, on their mobile phone using web app it's actually going to say you have to use one of these app protection policy apps which really just limits us to the first party apps so the microsoft apps so that's the mobile phone side of things kind of taken care of two more conditional access policies the first one we will look at is how we're going to deal with that control over preventing users from authenticating to the full client app on unmanaged devices uh, again we'll scope this to all users we'll scope it only to office 365 and we will say under our conditions we will look at two things we'll first of all limit this to the desktop operating system so i go in here and i choose windows and mac os uh, and then i within my client apps what i'm actually doing here is i can then say this doesn't apply if you're accessing from windows or mac os on the web 
but it does apply if you're trying to get to it using an actual client app. So that's where we limit that there. So we're logging from Edge. Uh, this policy, it's as if it didn't exist. This policy will only apply if I'm trying to authenticate on uh, the full client apps. And then where we get into the really powerful stuff is this thing called device state. And what we're doing here is we're saying this policy is not going to apply if you're on a hybrid Azure EG joint device or device marked as compliant. And what these roughly translate to are devices that are either joined to my on-premises domain or devices that are enrolled into Intune. Intune being that MDM service that gives an organization full control over, uh, over a device, over a Windows or a Mac device. Compliance is just an extra level of protection as far as we can say you have to have a firewall, you have to have antivirus, things like that. And then under our grant controls, this is where we say, OK, we're going to let you in under all those circumstances, but only uh, when your device becomes compliant or when it becomes hybrid Azure AD joined. And the effect of saying we're going to limit grant access to compliant or hybrid joined devices means we're going to deny it for every other type of device. User just signs in from their home PC without doing anything to let us manage that PC. We are saying uh, that that sign in is not going to be permitted. And we'll demonstrate what that looks like. The last conditional access policy that we're going to run through is the web app session control. So let's paint the picture so far. We've said on your personal device, you're not allowed in using the client apps. We're now going to let you in using the web apps, but you're going to have to uh, have that session controlled. You'll see here under assignments, we're saying all users, uh, the cloud apps, Again, limiting it to Office 365. And then in conditions, what I've actually said here uh, is we're going to apply this to the browser only. If I jump back to users here, just a quick shout out to a bit of uh, best practice. You'll see here we've got specific users excluded. Best practice with conditional access would be that you also exclude what we call break glass accounts. And so far as it's quite easy to accidentally lock out your admins and significantly important users. Maybe if you misconfigure conditional access, you could lock everyone out of everything. You want to have that back door under tightly secured uh, accounts. What you'll also see is just for the demo purposes, I haven't then limited this policy uh, to managed devices, but we would also just include there in the device state, we would exclude devices that are corporate. And then lastly, so we got the session, we've got the, the if part of this. Now what we're going to do with the then that we're basically saying we're going to grant access. However, as the user gets access, we're going to use this thing called conditional access app control. And that doesn't really roll off the tongue smoothly, but essentially what that means is as the user signs in, we're going to hand over to Cloud App Security and we're going to say, Cloud App Security, you've got your policies on the session, you take care of it. So with all that set up, uh, let's have a look at cloud app security. This is where we control what the user can do now that we've let them in to the web apps. I'll go into the section here called policies. I'll choose conditional access, which really just filters my, my policies, my rules to those that are going to be uh, to do with conditional access. And we can see here I've got a few set up. The first one I'll demonstrate is this blocking upload of potential uh, malware. And essentially what this does, and I'll very slowly drag my cursor through this, as you can see here under the control type, we're saying control file upload with inspection. And the type of inspection we're going to be doing, you can see down here, is a malware detection. So we're going to leverage that power of Microsoft Threat Intelligence. And we're going to analyze that file before it's allowed to be uploaded. And what you'll also see here is under the filters, we've seen this is only going to apply if the app is part of Microsoft Online Services. Where you may get more power out of this particular session policy is you probably wouldn't want to limit a session policy like this only to unmanaged devices. You'd probably want to apply this really to all devices for obvious reasons. And then we can see down here the action we're going to take. If we identify a malware upload, we're simply going to block that action. And we're going to give the user a custom message to let them know what's going on. We're also going to get alerts. I mentioned earlier that Cloud App Security gives us a ton of auditability uh, and investigation capability. This is going to help build that up by alerting Cloud App Security administrators. 
about the action. So a few more policies and then we're going to get into what the user experience looks like. The next one is going to be blocking the download on unmanaged devices. This one kind of does what it says on the tin, but you'll see here the session control type is control file download. You'll see there that says with inspection. In my case, I'm not going to actually inspect the content. I'm just going to apply it as a blanket rule where you could get a little bit more sophisticated about this is you could allow users to download files. Uh, however, block that file if it is particularly sensitive. So, for example, you might want to block file downloads if they contain sensitive uh, credit card information, uh, personally identifiable information, that kind of thing that might have regulatory uh, and more significant data loss ramifications. And then again, down here, we're saying block. And again, I'm going to customize that message just to let folks know exactly why when they try to download something that's going to be blocked. I'll jump back up. We've got a couple more here. Uh, we're going to block the cut, copy, paste and print of things in the teams.microsoft.com when I'm using it as a web app. This one's pretty hardcore in so far as you're really going to be walking that tight line here of what is secure and what is just interfering with folks productivity. I've kept this one in for the demo really just to kind of show you what you are capable of doing. I'm going to be blocking all cut, copy, paste. However, potentially, again, we could inspect that content. We could say we'll only apply this to certain types uh, of data. You can see here, this is where we can do a little bit of content inspection on that. Uh, and then again, we're just going to block it. And as always, I like to include that customized message just so that folks really are aware of why this is happening and they're not just getting a generic error message. The last policy that we're going to look at as far as controlling teams is we're going to look at block sending of messages based on real time content inspection. This one, for obvious reasons, I haven't just made this a blanket ban on the blocking of sending messages that would render teams kind of useless. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to block activities. Uh, the activity type here is going to be send item. So that's messages, chats. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of content inspection and you can see here what it's going to do is it's going to look for something that resembles a credit card number. Uh, there are algorithms that credit card numbers always have to comply to and that makes it easy for us to really identify when is a credit card a credit card number and when it's just 16 numbers. Uh, there we go. So that's all set up and again we're just going to say we're going to block that. So I will quickly come out of all this admin stuff and I will show you what the user experience is like. So we'll jump onto our BYOD device. And the first thing I'm going to do as a user, you know, I've got my Windows 10 PC at home, uh, start with the company. All of a sudden I have to work from home. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Teams, first of all. So let's just launch the Teams installer. And as that's uh, installing in the background, just to kind of reiterate the potential landscape and the threats that we're facing, if I open the Windows security app here, which is really just Microsoft Defender, you can see here, you know, I've gone ahead and I've turned off my virus and threat protection, so I'm not getting that cloud delivered protection or real time uh, protection against malware. Uh, I've turned off my firewall. This is not a safe place to be. And if I'm working in an IT team, I don't really know if I want to give my users much right over the kind of things they're going to be allowed to do on this type of device. So that's why we are where we are. So uh, I'm new with the company. I'm going to sign in to the full client app and I'll need to put in my ridiculously long domain name. I imagine as Teams Nation goes on today, you will be seeing an awful lot of very long strange uh, on Microsoft.com email addresses. So I'm going to try and authenticate here. Hopefully the demo gods are on my side. It looks like Teams has crashed. So let's see how far we get on with that. Either that or I'm being impatient. Let's uh, try and open Teams again. Now, as I try to sign in here and demonstrate the conditional access policy, conditional access rules, they apply uh, after the user has authenticated. So obviously I've said on the full client app, I'm not going to be allowed to log in. However, it doesn't enforce that until I got past this stage of actually authenticating. So I'm going to sign in. And what you'll see immediately using the full client app is access from personal devices is not allowed. 
that's quite clear. So that, that's a good place to be. Uh, similarly, if OneDrive built into Windows 10, if I tried to authenticate with that, I'd get similar message. So I know I can't use the client app. Let's jump into the web version. I'll open Edge. And I'm going to use Edge because as far as browser support for the Teams web app goes, uh, Edge is better than something like Firefox. So let's go to it. And I want, as I go through this authentication, I want you to pay attention to this URL bar up here because you're really going to see what happens when the conditional access policy kicks in and what happens when cloud app security starts enforcing these policies. It's just a nice surefire way of knowing that it's kind of it's kind of doing its job. So let's jump in here again. I'm going to sign in. Now, best practice would obviously be that you have multi-factor authentication enabled. I like to live dangerously in demo environments, so we're going to go with our MFA. And what you'll see up here is immediately. Well, first of all, this isn't standard Teams. But also in the URL, you'll see that all my traffic now is going to be routed through this domain of cas.ms. Again. As I continue through here, just keep an eye on this for me. Uh, you'll see here access to Teams is monitored. This tells me that a session policy is active. As an administrator, I can hide this. I don't have to show my users this. I like to show them it because we want to really be on our user's side. We want to remind them that, hey, you're, you're, you're making that leap now from the personal context to the enterprise context and you know, be on your best behavior. So continue to Microsoft Teams. And again, you'll see that that mcas.ms URL that appears, that's our top domain, and then teams.microsoft.com, that becomes a subdomain. Clearly, with Teams Nation, we're focusing on securing Teams here. However, it is important to note that with these session policies that I'm creating, this ability to proxy everything through cloud app security, that can extend beyond Teams, uh, it can extend beyond the, the first party Microsoft apps as well. So uh, let's see, where will we start demonstrating? Let's jump to the downloads folder of my BYD device. And I've got a few things that I'm going to play about with here. So we've installed Teams. We know that I can't authenticate with that. Uh, I'm going to jump into a team here. You'll see here a bunch of users. That was a chat with Megan. I'm signed in as Alex. And again, as Teams Nation goes on, you'll become very familiar with all our lovely employees of Contoso. I'll jump into the files tab here. And again, when I'm going to here, I'm really getting SharePoint online. I'm getting a document library. And let's see, I'll jump into this Excel file here. And again, you'll see that when I look at this, I can clearly tell I'm an edge. However, it looks a lot like the full client app. So as a user, I'm not feeling I'm missing out on much. Uh, one of the cool things you can actually also do with Edge is you can install, let's see, quote unquote, uninstall a web as kind of like an app where it really just puts it in its own container. So uh, again, just to kind of demonstrate, you know, yeah, everything's going through MCAS, but I've got read write access here. So I can say I am updating this file and because it's in SharePoint online, autosave happens, all that good stuff. However, where MCAS is going to start taking control is what I want to do is I'm going to say, oh, this looks like some good info to have. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it on my personal PC. As I right click this, we'll see copy. And as I click copy, boom, MCAS intercepts that, uses the session controls that we set up because that action is blocked based on the policy uh, for unmanaged devices. And I get that with my custom message here. You'll see here within the Excel online, the Word online, the PowerPoint line, I still get the, the copy icon showing up. If I were to do that natively within Teams, so say, for example, uh, go into a chat and try and copy from that chat, it wouldn't even show me the copy button. And that's one of the cool things about session policies. OK, so we've established that we can't cut copy paste. Again, kind of hardcore stuff, but you might want to apply it to set really sensitive information. Uh, what I'll now do is uh, I'm going to come out of the Excel online app. And I'm going to stay in my files here. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to think, well, you know what? I'm not allowed to sign into Excel using my company account, but on my home PC, I've got Excel anyway. So I'm just going to download this. And as I click that download button, uh, what we'll see is again, we'll see that session policy kick in. It's going to intercept that download and it's going to block it. It replaces it with something though. It replaces it with this text file here. 
And if I open the text file just to show you, there's really not much interest in here. Shows us the file name, shows us the size. And again, we get that custom message to say that this was blocked. And like I said, I'm being universal across this. I'm saying for folks in that conditional access policy that I scoped, you're not getting to download anything. I could have different rules for different folks, uh, or I could have different rules for different file types. I could say, you know, only block the download if it's got sensitive information on it, and we can do content inspection and things like that. So that's our download controls and force. And similarly, if I were to hit the sync button, yeah, OneDrive is built into Windows 10. However, I'm not going to be able to sign into OneDrive because of that conditional access policy. So I can't sync. OK, next thing, let's uh, now take this known malicious file. So this is a little test file that Microsoft provides, and uh, it looks a lot like a virus. So what I will do is I will hit upload. I'll go to files here. Uh, and I'll try and upload my malicious file. Now, you know, if I'm a user, the chances of me doing this deliberately are quite slim. I give them the benefit of the doubt, but we still want to protect ourselves against it just in case. Uh, I'll hit upload, and what we'll see is this action has been blocked. So it's looking at the hash of that file, comparing that to what Microsoft Threat Intelligence have, and it's saying, this is malicious. We're not going to let that file get into Microsoft Teams. And then lastly, just to kind of demonstrate the kinds of things that these session policies are capable of. I'll jump into the chat here and I am going to open this little file here, which I got saved earlier. So this is a credit card number. It's more specifically, it's a MasterCard test number. Uh, so, you know, don't try and use that, it won't work. Uh, however, what I'll do is I'll copy it out of Notepad and let's see, I'm just going to paste this. I'm going to send this to Megan. And as I paste it, oh, wait a second, uh, I blocked pasting in Teams. Again, hardcore stuff, but they are capable of doing it. And what I'm actually going to try now is uh, I'm going to just simply type that in because clearly, you know, that's a, well, yeah, I block pasting, but that doesn't stop someone doing anything manually. So let's go in and say, here's my card number, 555 and as I do that, what happens is the session controls it intercepts that and it says the custom message. Uh, we're, we're looking at the content type here. We're seeing it's a credit card number and we're seeing your you know, company policies. You can't send stuff like that over uh, Microsoft Teams because you know it's, it's plain text at the end of the day. Yeah, it's encrypted using HTTPS and it's encrypted using BitLocker on the servers at the other end. But is that how you want to be communicating that type of information? Probably not. So we can't send that. Uh, OK, so what I'll do is I will pop out of Edge and that's kind of what the user experience is going to be like. And again, just to reiterate, the whole reason we've had to kind of force users down this path of using the web app rather than the full app is although Microsoft Teams is a full client app, it kind of feels like just a web app in a container. Uh, we can only apply those session policies to users who authenticate via the web, so they have to be able to go to that URL. So that's the user experience. What I'll do is I will wrap up now. I'll jump back to the admin experience. I'm going to go to Cloud App Security and I'm going to go to Alerts. And with the policies that we set up, so that's the rules to say block downloads, block malicious files being uploaded, we can optionally convert those if they happen into alerts and we can set a custom severity on it so we can kind of decide what the priority is going to be for investigation. So as I jump into this one here, I've got an alert here for blocking upload of potential malware. It gives me the user that that applied to. And if I click into this item in the activity log, you know, it tells me what's going on, tells me the file name, tells me the policy it matched in the background. So I might be seeing an alert, but I'm kind of wondering why am I seeing this alert? That will tell me why. Uh, and it shows me more information about the file. So we can see here the type of malware that was detected and what the hash of the file is, because I then might want to go and put that as an indicator into something like Defender. You know, these are the kinds of then more investigative capabilities we then get out of Cloud App Security. I can look at the context of the user if there is a whole bunch of suspicious activity surrounding this user, I can quickly jump and I can see, okay, well, what other IP addresses have they signed in as? What devices have they signed into? That kind of thing. It really quite quickly lets me paint a picture of any threats that might be going on, or maybe more realistically, 
any kind of patterns of users trying to get around our DLP solutions. So that is, in a nutshell, how you can use cloud app security uh, and conditional access to really control and protect stuff going in and coming out of Microsoft Teams. I've specifically kind of contained that within the BYOD scenario, but a lot of that you should take and maybe apply to non-BYOD devices. You're going to want to do things such as block the malware upload on really any device, things such as that. So uh, what I'll do is I'll jump into the chat now. I'll have a look to see if there's any uh, questions that I can help out with. If you've got any, just drop it in the chat. Uh, and as I'm doing that, you can scan that QR code. You can give us some feedback. Let me know if this session was helpful for you. Any feedback is always welcome. Uh, so I'll jump into the chat just now. So I'll just work my way through this. Uh, we've got a question right at the beginning from uh, Ryan. Uh, Hi there, we have a full M365 setup for everything, AD files, etc., along with cloud app security and conditional access. That's good. Do you know of a way we can, do you know of a way that we could allow Microsoft Teams to be installed on non-compliant devices? What I mean is that due to the link with the files on Teams into SharePoint, we'd like for some users to have Teams installed on personal devices, but ensure no file access. Currently, we have policies blocked and force this. Yeah, so that's quite a that's a good question, and maybe need a wee bit more information out of you to really recommend your strategy there. Historically, when we looked at conditional access, I showed you that we were going to limit it to the Office 365 app. That's actually a collection of apps, so that includes Teams, it includes SharePoint, Exchange, all that kind of stuff. And one of the difficulties we have when we start breaking those out and applying conditional access to only the specific elements of it, it kind of breaks the whole experience because these de these services are so dependent on each other, especially with Teams, as you all know, we're talking Exchange, we're talking SharePoint, the whole shebang. Uh, so I'd probably need a wee bit more information out of you what you're trying to achieve there. I guess top of my head, I'm thinking have multiple conditional access policies. For some users, if you want to block the whole thing, have them in their own conditional access policy have other users in another conditional access policy. And then potentially what you could do is, I haven't tried this, so uh, this is provided without warranty, but what you could maybe try is you can apply a block control over only SharePoint Online, and you could maybe say that to the same folks that you're going to let into Teams on those non-compliant devices. Again, just thinking out loud, I need to test that. And quite frankly, Microsoft don't really recommend that. They want you to use that full Office 365 app so that you've got that kind of consistent approach. Uh, OK, next question from Mark. Uh, our business doesn't allow the Teams app on BYD or personal devices. We are forced to use the web app at Teams with CAS, but the functionality on Teams web app is so limited compared to the desktop app. We want to be secure, but get hammered in the functionality. It sucks. So I guess, you know, in my experience, I don't find that it does perform that poorly. Uh, there's a few things that you won't get in the web apps. I mentioned a few trivial ones like background blur. Uh, but you know, as far as getting into your files, being productive and chats, channels, Excel online, all that kind of stuff, you know, at the end of the day, Teams as a full app is mostly is mostly a web container. Uh, I guess, you know, there are a few things maybe with regards to the advanced voice features that you might have trouble with. Um, but it's about finding that balance between creating a secure environment and creating an environment where users can uh, be in, you know, 100% productive. Uh, many thanks. Great session. Impressive. Oh, thanks for the feedback, guys. That's really good. No other questions. Excellent. Good stuff. Oh, thanks, Ru. Great session. That's from this story. That's from Dr. Azure AD himself. I'll take that compliment. Thank you very much. I guess I will also promote uh, Nestori. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, is doing a session later on in the same track. Totally recommend that. He might show you a few ways to break what I've kind of just shown you insofar as uh, Dr. Azure AD is he's all into breaking conditional access and all that kind of stuff. But that's some advanced stuff and I'd recommend this session. Cool. I think we're done for the questions. Amazing. Thank you, Ru, so much. That was a fantastic session. Really enjoyed it. And as everyone's echoing that in the comments, 
so well explained and, and easy to follow and some, some cool stuff. Nice yes, yeah. one, indeed. <laughs> Good stuff. No problem, Pete. Thanks for having me. Yeah, conditional access and cloud app security. That's very, very fun. Recommend everyone go and check it out. Yeah, absolutely. And do go and uh, leave some great feedback for, for Roo. Um, and um, thank you so much for attending the session. 